Let's welcome Mr. Sane Pettiford. Asani, quick question for you. Is it working? Yes, you can just press this, this button. Can you yeah. hold on to it? Just hold on to it. Like, that's it. Asani, it's, it's working. Good evening. Yes, good evening. So, quick question for you, Asani. Um, why is it, the, back to the question I asked on the island, and I love the way you answered. I hope you can do that here. Why is it that Many ladies, godly, good ladies, beautiful, although they want to get married, just remain single. They want to get married, but they continue to remain single. Yeah, why is that? Yeah, yeah. What's the cost of that? In my opinion, the reason why they're still single is because men haven't become who they need to be to qualify for uh, a relationship with these women in marriage. And I think you were talking about maturity, right? I think that there's many women, unfortunately, who have over-spiritualized the men in their life. They further advanced themselves educationally, advanced themselves in terms of careers, in terms of finances. So we're seeing that women are constantly developing and men's development has been arrested. And so because of that, uh, as women become greater and better and more empowered, um, they're looking for people who can accommodate them on the level that they're on. Hmm. And men need to rise up and realize that, listen, if they can do it, you can do it. We, is that right? Let me just say this. We live in a society where for a long time it's been a man's world. But as women have gotten more freedom and opportunity, they have pursued things that were always denied them. And so they're not being held back anymore and they're going out to get it. And so women deserve to have a partner who's equal to them in these areas. So men, it's our responsibility to empower ourselves to step up to be the men that God has called us to be so that we can love on these women the way they want to be loved. Ladies, I thought you were going to say amen. <laughs> Lady, listen, men, it's just difficult for a woman to marry someone she should be financially responsible for. Ladies, if you don't respond, I'll just move on. It's just difficult. It's just difficult for to you to be that, that kind of person. So, so men, because you can be like they are proud, but it's not as if they are proud. Maybe you have an extreme issue. And that's why most ladies would just rather be alone than be with a jerk. So men, it's time to stand up. And listen, and listen some, some men instead of even going to just keep playing around. So we need men to mature, men to be responsible. Okay, so the, um, how can a lady become more attractive to a man? I, I could, someone says, like, you know, I noticed something. Thank you. I noticed something. And what I noticed is this. This is what I noticed. That um, it seems as if few girls like Toke Makinde, Toke Makinwa, give me some more names. What? Linda KG. Younger girls, younger girls. What? She's, she's almost 40, right? Yes. What? CC, Lin, Nina. Who? What? Younger girls. Is Alex a girl also? Oh, Alex is a girl? Oh, Alex. See, I noticed something that, I noticed something that, this is what I noticed. It seems as if those girls have a lot of people that want to date them. Yes or no? Yes. And you don't have a lot of people that want to date you. Why? Is it that you have a demonic problem? <laughs> so, but if you notice, let me tell you the reason why. And, and this is my question to Asani. If you notice this, the singles that are on media draw attention and it's a lot of exposure because millions of people are exposed to them people get to know them and their rate of attraction is very high so if nobody knows you if nobody is aware of you your rate of attraction will be very low because you know, you know let me tell you how this thing works it's mathematics you need a rate 
of attraction before you can it's like um it's it's like um it's like advert on social media when you advertise there will be a rich after the rich there will be people that will like or follow if people do not know you they can't like or follow you but the question i want to ask asani as a lady how can i improve my attractiveness well i think you made a good point yes and i was talking in the other service about statistics suggest that when women make a decision to just go out once a week to a restaurant, to a social environment. They put themselves in an environment to be seen. But a lot of women are so busy, they're so career focused, they're so involved in ministry that they go from work to home, to church to home, they are to so, work to home, some of them are to waiting. church to home. Some of them are even walking or in church. They're just sitting at home waiting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you, you have to expose yourself. You have to present yourself. You know, if, if you want to be attractive by men, you have to show yourself to be attractive. You have to put yourself on display. Now, when I say put yourself on display, I mean in an appropriate way. The fact is, a lot of women are attracting boys and not men. That, that's, so you want to make sure that you're attracting a man. Is that right? And so if you're going to attract a man, you need to know what a man is. And so when we're talking about manhood, because if men are going to rise to become better men, men need to understand what manhood really is. And it's important to realize that there are four pillars, and I'm going to say this really quickly, there are four pillars that make a man a man. Number one, a man should have the pillar of a king. And a king is given provision, right, in order to provide. He's given vision in order to provide. Second, uh, the, the second pillar of a man is that of a warrior. And a warrior is given strength in order to protect. The third pillar is the pillar of a mentor, and the mentor is given wisdom in order to teach. And the fourth pillar is the pillar of a friend. And a friend is given love in order to connect. So he has to have all of these pillars that make him a man. Unfortunately, so many of our men are very one-dimensional in their approach. So either our finances, we think that makes us a man, or our ability to sex as many women as possible, that makes us a man. And so if we have a false definition, we operate based upon these false definitions in terms of who we select. And so if you have quality women who love God, who are about their business, they're going to attract quality men into their lives. And so continue to be the best version of yourself and continue to be out there in social so that the more you're out there, the more you expose yourself to real men who want you in serious relationships. Wonderful. Wonderful. So how important is dressing to a man? How important is a woman's dress to a man? Yes. It's very important because one of the biggest needs of a man is an attractive woman. Every man wants an attractive woman, and I would imagine that every woman ultimately wants an attractive man. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you look your best at all times. So that means your clothing, your hair, your perfume. You want to be the best version of yourself. I kind of think about if you were to buy a home. Would you want a rehab home with broken windows and broken doors and a cracked foundation? Or would you want a beautiful home that has all of the beauties that make a home a home? You probably want a beautiful home, right? And it has a greater value. So as you increase your physical appearance, you increase your value and attractiveness to a man. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's talk about this issue of attraction. Because this is where born again suck a lot. So it, one is addressing, but what are the things that attract a man to a woman? One is dressing. What else? Attitude. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know a single man that likes a woman with a bad, nasty attitude. Now you talked about how a lot of us come out of relationships and we're still hurting. And so if we're still hurting, a lot of times we're bringing that hurt into future relationships. And we're, holding, and we're holding our present partners hostage to past pains that we never overcame. And so if we are cynical, if we are jealous, if we have attitude, if we're angry, all of those things will turn a man off. So you have to have a pleasant personality and a pleasant disposition in order to keep him. So your looks may attract him, but your attitude and your personality will keep him. I also think something that ladies need to know that attract men, and we're talking about attraction from the ladies' perspective, is this. Humor. See, men love a woman that is fun to be around with. Unfortunately, most women I know, 
it's so boring. See, you can't even have a conversation. Just pick a topic. You say, hmm? <laughs> really? Just pick a topic. You can't even engage in a topic. For example, you know, for example, how many of you are aware that there's APC convention? Wave. See, just about 10%. And the 10%, how many ladies are aware there's APC convention? Look, look at that. And you live in this state. So, because you want the men to come up to talk to you, and you want them to talk about Telemundo, right? You want them to talk about Brazil, um, Mexican soap opera. See, they are not going to talk about that. Men are going to, see, when they, they are conversation as unisex. Just about life, just about life, just about things. For example, um, Serena Williams lost the, lost the, do you know about that? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, it, and because, because one of the man, one of the biggest need for a man is recreational companionship. Yes. It, it's support. So, when you don't find someone that can really support you, what happens over time is that what? You just, see, you guys just sit down together and it's just boring. Next thing, just look at you. Look at each other. Let's go and eat. When he say let's go and eat, since you don't know more than food, let's go and eat. When you finish eating, since you have eaten, what next? Let me eat you. Let's go. Let's go to bed. Because you just don't know how to enjoy and, and let me say, and the reason why a lot of women don't know how to have conversation and enjoy by themselves is this. They are really hoping that if they date a funny guy, he's going to bring joy and happiness into them. They don't know that guys are looking for someone that will bring joy and happiness to them also. Very true. Very true. Can, can I just say one more thing? Yes, sir. My wife had three brothers. So she grew up around boys. She grew up around men. And being involved and exposed to them all of her life, she got a chance to understand how they think, how they operate, how they react, how they show up in relationships. So when she got into dating and in relationships, she was able to, to easily transition into knowing how to relate to a man because she was around boys her life. And what I've noticed is that women who have male associations, friends or brothers, or know and they feel comfortable around other men, make the best candidates for a relationship. <laughs> so if you don't have any male friends, I suggest you get some and learn from them so it prepares you for your next relationship. How do you, what do you think about online dating? Ah, online dating. I'll start by saying this. A grape can be used for medicinal purposes, medicine. A grape can be used for its nutritional value. But that same grape, given a certain spin, given a certain twist, can do great harm. It's not what you use, it's how you use what you use, and not where you get it from, but what you do with it once you get it. I say that to say, social media and online dating can be a very good thing, because I personally know people today who are married and have been married a long time with beautiful children who met online. However, it requires that you pay more attention to the people that you connect with because some people know how to lie and create a profile that represents a, a, a fictitious perspective of who they really are. And you can be lied to, you can be deceived if you just go based upon what is on that particular page. So the way that you interact and the way that you date has to be different because it is online. So you have to learn how to slowly take it from online to offline and engage them in the appropriate way and get to know them for who they really are to see if this is a qualifiable relationship. So I have no problem with it if you know how to use it. Okay. So, so this is what I will say to you about online dating. One, one year of literal dating is equal to three years of online dating. That's why I view it. Let me add to that because that's a great point. Another question is about long distance dating, right? Yes. So I know a lot of people who have dated someone who was long distance for say two, three years. And then they move in close proximity 
get married and the relationship doesn't work. It's because they've only known them in a two-dimensional way. They know them through phone calls, they know them through occasional visits. So whenever I'm counseling a couple, I say, listen, if you're dating somebody long distance, before you even think about getting married, you've got to move in the same geographical location for a period of time and learn that person in a three-dimensional way because there's certain things you'll never pick up over the phone or on a video screen that you'll pick up when you're in their presence. Mm -hmm. And so much like online dating, it can be a disadvantage if you don't do it effectively. Fantastic, 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 fantastic. Fantastic. So I, I want to take a question. Um, So I'm just trying to take questions online. So how do you manage tribal or racial inter-tribe or inter-race marriages? What are the challenges of it? Ah, that's a very good question. So now in the States, you, I, I've counseled many couples who have been of different races, like black, white, and I've counseled couples who have been of different cultures. And I've realized that the cultural differences create more of a problem than the racial differences in terms of you being of a different race. You can be of a different race and of the same culture. Correct. Right? Or you can be of the same race in a different culture. And so I think, matter of fact, I dated someone outside my culture. Uh, I was in a five-year relationship with her. And the cultural differences didn't destroy our relationship. Other things did. However, there were certain cultural expectations of what she expected of me as a man that I wasn't familiar with. And I think that because we didn't have enough conversations about that to really unpack that, it didn't work and it created awkwardness. So if you're dating someone of a different culture, at the end of the day, I think it comes through conversation and really identifying what are the similarities, what are the differences, and can you live with those differences? If those differences create too much of a problem where it, allow, it keeps you from coming into agreement, you may want to date somebody who's more in align with your traditions and your culture and your in your belief system so that it makes that relationship more productive. No, no, please go, keep going. Keep does, going. That, does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, so another challenge, like for instance, interfaith relationships. I've counseled people who are of different religions or even within Christianity of different denominations. That also has presented a problem if you allow the differences to get in the way. And so at the end of the day, the Bible says, can two walk together unless they be in agreement? And beyond physical attraction, beyond emotional connection, what makes a relationship last is the power of agreement. Faith oftentimes and culture oftentimes will dictate how we raise our children, how we manage our finances, how we, how we function in our marriage. So you wanna make sure that you have a similar foundation from which to grow your relationship. And if you do, you have the foundation of something that can really work. Okay, this other question. My, my boyfriend is an amazing man the only problem I have with him is that he doesn't believe in himself. His family doesn't believe in him. It's affected him all his life. And because he never had the freedom to do whatever he wanted to do. He always procrastinates. Often I, take, I, get to, I get to apply for a job for him. I'm a career woman. I'm a workaholic. I'm career wise. He's too relaxed. Even when I suggest a business for him to start, he, requests, he had to request for capital for his family. They disposed... They dispose the idea because they feel he can't make the business work. I usually get blunt with him and let him know let him know he has to believe in himself. Currently, he's depressed, and I don't know how to help him. He's mm -hmm. a good guy. He doesn't cheat, but career-wise, he doesn't measure up. <laughs> I feel I have a long way to go helping him discover himself. I have a lot of goal-oriented guys that are asking me out, but I feel leaving my boyfriend because of what he's going through right now will be fair. I don't know what to do. If the Kara issue wasn't there, he's a perfect guy for every woman. What do I do? We have been together for two years. The fact that you said he didn't cheat turned this crowd inside out. So is that not a normal thing? Do most men cheat? <laughs> well, let me speak to that. Let me speak to the question. Um, what I've learned and discovered is that there's nothing that's more unattractive to a woman than an insecure man. If a man doesn't have confidence, it's, it becomes disgusting to a woman. 
Because every woman wants a man with a plan, a man with a vision, a man with goals, a man who's hardworking, who wants something for himself. Because she's looking for a relationship with a man who's going to lead and guide them for their life. And so if she's taking the lead, if she's playing that role, then we have a role reversal here. There was a time when we used to have pretty women and working men. But it seems like now we have a whole lot of pretty men and working women. We switch roles. And that role reversal has negatively impacted our relationship. And so as much as she can to encourage him, he's got to find his own motivation. He's got to surround himself with other men. I say this all the time, ladies, all the time. Every man needs a man. Every man needs a man. Now, I grew up with my dad. I had a great example of a father. And so he taught me what it means to be a man. But my upbringing as a man is different than Pastor Balaji's upbringing of a man. Now, he may have experienced things that I never experienced before. So I may have certain deficits or things that I'm lacking that I wasn't exposed to. So when I come into relationship with Pastor Balaji and I get to know him, he helps me to be more complete as a man because I can glean from his experiences and from his wisdom and from his strength to make me better. So the problem with men is oftentimes we operate on our own islands, right? We don't want to be connected. We don't have many friends. And so we want to do things our own way. And that prohibits us from being the best that we can be. So I would encourage this particular gentleman, as I would encourage all of you, surround yourself with strong men because as you do that, you become strengthened in every area of your life. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Another question here. Um, um, I believe that you can get too close to date. What's your take on that? As Pastor Balaji thinks, there's nothing like that. I don't even understand the question. That, like, we're, like, we're friends. Like, we can date. We're too close to date. Oh, okay, okay. So if we have a really, 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 really close friendship, it's almost weird to now date. Yeah. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. Okay, well, my opinion is that the foundation of every relationship you have should be friendship. My wife and I were friends before we entered into a relationship. I think that if I dated her the traditional way, you know how you, you meet somebody who's attractive and you come together based upon that attraction and oftentimes what we do, when we, like there's almost like steps to success in a relationship and a lot of times we go backwards. So typically when we date, we start with the sex piece and if that's good, then we connect emotionally. And then if that's good, I may take you out on a date and involve you socially. And if that's good, then I'll incorporate the spiritual. Well, my wife and I did it the other way. We had a spiritual connection first, and then it led to a social engagement. So we became friend, legitimate friends. And because I was friendly with her and her with me and we liked each other, we were just chilling as friends we had the right foundation to take it to the next step. So she didn't put me in the friend zone, I didn't put her in the friend zone or anything like that. We realized what we wanted for our lives. And so my question is, what is your motive and your intent and your purpose for dating in the first place? Are you doing it because eventually you want to transition into something that's long lasting or are you doing it because you want to have fun? If you're doing it because you want something that's long lasting, that man better be your friend. So many people love their partners, but they don't like them. Does that make sense? You can love somebody, but just not like who they are and how they act and how they function. And if you like someone, it's an indication that you have friends. Can you explain you, you love them, but you don't like them? Meaning you could be in a relationship with some, someone and be physically attracted to them and have a love for them because you've been with them for so long. But there's things about their personality you just don't like. There's things about their mindset that just don't click with you. The way they interact and their emotional reactions to things just get on your nerves. Like you love them, like I love you, but I just don't like you. Now, love brings you into the relationship, but liking someone keeps you from wanting to leave the relationship. So you have to increase your likability factor with the person you're in a relationship with, which means that the foundation of everything you have should be a friendship. So when my wife and I get on each other's nerves, and it does happen, it doesn't last for so long because at the end of the day, we're friends. We're gonna make up, we're gonna keep it going, we're gonna move forward and overcome the problems. But if I don't like you, and you get on my nerves, I'm out. Does that make sense? So you want to engage in a serious friendship, and to me, that's a great qualifier for someone who could be a potential partner in your life. 
Wow. I'm a girl updated four, five, six guys. And I'm... S- <laughs> I'm a girl updated four, five, six guys. And now I'm single. I've gone to some bad patch. I don't know if I believe in love. What am I getting wrong? What are you getting wrong? Yeah. Ah. A lot of times, if we've dated four, five, six guys and the relationship didn't work out and now we don't know if we believe in love, sometimes we got to take a look at ourselves. Sometimes it makes sense to be alone and all by yourself to evaluate what's going on. Why Mm. do I think the way I think? Why do I feel the way that I feel? Let me take the time to assess each one of these relationships and see what went wrong. Because at the end of the day, I'm the lowest common denominator because I showed up in all of these relationships. So is there a pattern with boyfriend number four, boyfriend number five, boyfriend number six that I can identify? If it's a pattern, is it always their fault? Or is it possible that there could be something in me that I need to work out and get over and heal from in order to prepare myself for boyfriend number last. Is it possible to be attracted to someone you can date? Is it possible to be attracted to someone you can date? Is it possible to be attracted to, to someone, someone you that can, you cannot date? Yes, you know that dating this person is chaotic, but you have strong attraction to them. Yeah, that's possible. You could be attracted to many people, if I'm understanding your question right. Yes, sir. You cannot date them for whatever reason, but you're attracted to them. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so there are two single people, yeah. and you have a lot of attraction for this person, yeah. but your personality, your value system, are not just complementary. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because you have to understand, attraction shows up in many ways. Like, like for instance, every, and I say this all the time, every single relationship on the planet Earth, male, female, male, male, Female, female, every single relationship is based upon some form of attraction. Now, it may not be a physical sexual attraction. It could be an intellectual attraction. It can be a social or recreational attraction. An attraction simply means that you two come together and have an interest based upon a commonality that you both share. So your pastor is a brilliant mind. I'm attracted to that. Right? So we can come together based upon that commonality. Now, it will never go any further than that. That's all it's ever going to be. Thank you, Lord. I want to make that clear. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and so when dealing with members of the opposite sex, there could be things about a person that you're attracted to, like physically they're just beautiful people, but everything about them makes them the wrong person for you. You know, I get this, there's hundreds of beautiful women in this audience. If I were single, beautiful women, but that doesn't mean that they're right for me. So you got to be able to look beyond the physical and you have to know the character of a person, the heart of a person to see if it will be a good match. But if you're just coming together based upon physical looks, you're setting yourself up for failure anyway. It's quiet, but somebody will get it at some point. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. How do I move on from an ex-relationship without getting into another relationship? Without getting into another relationship? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get into another relationship. <laughs> listen, listen. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you that I heard that I absolutely do not agree with, but I think there's a principle in it. So I heard somebody say who deals with divorce counseling, and maybe you think differently. Their opinion is like, if you've been married to someone for 10 years and you get a divorce, right? Then you have to wait 10 years to heal from that 10 year marriage before you can step into another relationship. So if we take that and apply that to dating, if you've been with somebody for say two years, you have to wait two years before entering into another relationship with someone else. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that, But what I do agree with is the principle that when you've come out of a relationship, you need time to be by yourself. You should not race into another relationship because what you're racing out of, you may be racing right back into with someone else. And then you may be engaging in what we call rerun relationships. You know, ever notice why 
It seems like you keep dating the same type of guy. You keep attracting the same type of issues into your life because you haven't taken the time to go through a he-tox, getting that man out of your system, or a she-tox, getting that woman out of your system, and truly becoming whole and complete within yourself in order to be ready for the person that God would have for you. And so a lot of times when you date, you make selection process, you make selections based upon your hurts, based upon your pains, based upon what you're lacking in your life because you want somebody to fill that void, but it may be a temporary situation. So you don't want to make you don't want to make permanent decisions based upon temporary situations of hurt and pain. Take the time to be alone and embrace your aloneness. Your pastor basically said it. If you're single and sad, then you're not going to wind up being married and mad. But if you're single and satisfied, then you can be married and gratified. So who you are before you say I do is an indication of what you'll be after you say I do. So take the time to be the best you before you go there. Okay, this is from a guy. How can I be sure? He said that I have two girls. I love both of them. He said, how can I make the best decision amongst the two of them? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't... Oh, okay, hold on. Media, can you put up the email address, um, the social media addresses? Because some people want to send questions. They don't know the addresses. So some people want to send questions. Put it up yeah. again, please. I, yeah. would, I, I, I have a problem with that question. I would question his love for two women. I don't, I don't think that that's possible that you can love two women at the same time. Now... You can have feelings for two women at the same time, but you can't love two women at the same time because the definition of love and the way that it operates goes against the circumstance that he's in. So to me, in my opinion, I would have him to self-evaluate what is it that he's really feeling, what does he believe that he has with these women, and, and, and take a chance to pause for a minute to make a decision that's healthy for him. But I don't believe that you can be in love with or, or have legitimate love for two people in that particular way. Okay, so let me rephrase the question. So most guys always have the fear that, so I'm dating this girl, I really like her, how can I be sure that this is the person I'm meant to marry? Yeah, that's a very good question. A lot of people struggle with that because they're thinking, well, if I choose her and I'm with her for life, what if there's somebody better out there? Yeah. Well, here's, here's the reality. My wife, in my opinion, is beautiful. Your wife, beautiful. Really? But they're not the most beautiful. <laughs> she you think, is. You think in she a respectful is? way. In a respectful way. No, 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 in a respectful I, I, way. I, I, just, to, uh, just to clarify. Just to clarify. <laughs> I'm just making a point. I'm yeah. just making a point. Because I, 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 I've not told you your wife is beautiful yet. You know. <laughs> so, so the reality is, as beautiful as my wife is, she's not, the, she's not the most beautiful woman in the world. I may love her body. She may not have the best body in the world. I love her personality. She may not have the best personality in the world. So there's always going to be someone who may be more attractive, who may have a better personality, who may have more money, who may have more whatever. But if that's what you're searching for, then you're setting yourself up for failure. You have to learn to accept and embrace the gift that God has put in your life. And if it's everything that you need, don't worry about all the other things that are around you because otherwise you're doing this all day long, running in all these different directions and have no foundation. Does that, make, does that answer the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you have to say to men? To, to men and guys, single guys, men in this place? What do I have to say to them? Yeah. Um, I would say to them that there's so many beautiful, spiritual, educated, qualifiable women who are waiting for you to get it together. And what I have found is, is that not true? Is that true? Right? And they deserve companionship with a good man who's going to love them, who's going to honor them, who's going to respect them, who's going to be engaged in a relationship with a man who is one-track minded, who's single woman minded, who's not interested in womanizing and having uh, relationships all over the place. Listen, at the end of the day, every woman wants to feel safe. They want to feel safe. And if you can't provide that level of safety for them, stop messing with them. Leave them alone. Stop giving them false impressions. Stop putting on disguises and wearing masks and telling lies and giving the appearance that you're something that you're not. Don't be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Don't be that. 
I got to be hard on the men because we have a lot to do with the relational state of affairs in this world. And if we step up and take our responsibility as men and realize that the women that God has created, they're not sex objects, they're not the help who is there to just accommodate us, that we're to enter into a partnership with them. And see, the Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And if you truly understand what the scripture talks about when it talks about relationship and when it talks about marriage, it also says that marriage should be honorable by all. If you truly honor the institution of marriage, then it means that when you get into a relationship with someone who you're pursuing marriage with, then you will have a character and integrity and you will honor her because you honor him. The Bible says, love what God loves and hate what God hates. Well, God hates people who mess around, who cheat, who don't operate in integrity, who don't stand on his word. He doesn't like that type of behavior. So if you're truly a man of God, then function in that godliness in the relationships that you have with these women. That's what they're looking for. That's what they want from you. It's quiet because I'm, I'm stepping on some toes, but this is the message that we need to hear as men. Wow. Is it right for a woman to support a man financially when they are dating? Oh, Lord, are you trying to get me in trouble, Pastor? <laughs> um, here's the deal. And, and there, there are cultural differences, so you got to understand the perspective that I'm coming from. I believe that it is every man's job and role and function to be a provider. It's crystal clear because it's in the word. Um, when I first met my wife when we were dating, she had her own apartment. I was living at home with my parents. She had her own car. I had a bus card. So if you looked at where we were at that moment, I didn't qualify. But if she had only looked at what my material possessions were at that moment, we wouldn't be together today. She saw things in me. She saw the potential. She saw the vision. She saw the plan. And I think in addition to looking at where the person is today, you have to look at the potential in that person and where they're going. Now, here's the deal. She could marry potential that she saw in me when we were 25. But when you're 35 and 45, you're not interested in marrying potential. <laughs> there should be things that that man should have accomplished in his life many, 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 many years ago. So I think the season of your life and the age that you're at determines how that answer or how that question should be answered. Fantastic. We were great friends before we started dating. Now we're dating and I do not enjoy it again. Mm, that can happen. You know, I would say that every relationship is for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And you've got to be able to properly assess what this is for. There's certain, I, I still think there needs to be some type of chemistry and attraction that you have with the person beyond just being their friend. You know, but at the same time, you can grow to love and grow to establish an attraction that's real and long lasting. And so I think that if I had a conversation with her and a conversation with him and we're able to dig deep down into the root of it to identify what the problem is, I'm sure that we can make certain tweaks and adjustments for them to have a happy, sustainable, mutually beneficial relationship. But a lot of times we come in with these preconceived thoughts and notions about what we think chemistry is supposed to be and what we think attraction is supposed to be, and it's fleeting. It doesn't last. And so if you have the right foundation, there are things that you can work on to gain that level of attraction over time. Because I've seen it happen time what are and those time things, again. Sir? What are those things? Yes, sir. You know, chemistry can be created. That's just a fact. People think, well, you know, people believe in this whole um, love at first sight phenomenon, which I think is ridiculous. So I've got to have this feeling about some person when I first meet them, if it's going to work. And so the first kiss, if the first kiss is weird and awkward, then that's an indication that that's not the one. And that's just ridiculous. You can be on a date for the first time and it'd be a horrible first date. But if you give it another chance, date two may be phenomenal. So you've already made a huge determining factor about a person based upon one experience and not have taken the time to get to know them and try things out. And so what I'm saying is 
The mood that you want in your relationship, if you want the chemistry, it can happen over time. And when you begin to learn somebody, and you realize that you have shared interests and shared goals and you want the same things and you begin having passion for the same things, that creates chemistry, that creates camaraderie, that creates relationship. And that's why your relationship should always be based upon some purpose. See, when purpose drives your relationship, even when you don't like your partner, you stay in it because there's a purpose and a plan to the union that you have as you've come together. And if my wife and I didn't have a purpose, because there were times when she fell out of love and didn't love me anymore. There were times where she wasn't attracted to me. There was times where she just didn't like me because of the things that we were going through. But because we had purpose and intentionality for our union, we were able to get through those rough patches and now we're more in love now than ever before. So your relationship goes through seasons. And if you understand that, you can overcome what you're going through. Fantastic. Wow, so many tough questions. When is a relationship over? Uh, wow, that's so broad. Yeah, maybe you can give us, you know, big, 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 and, and the reason why is that some people are trying to, are in relationships that are over. Yeah, yeah. And let me say something to you. It's easier to give birth to a new baby than to revive a dead child. Did you get that? It's easier to give birth to a new baby than to revive a dead child. That means when some things are dead, bury, move on. So to answer that question, I'm going to need a moment to think about that. I think the rules are different if you're single and dating than if you're married. Yes, okay. single and dating. Okay, so if you're single and dating, so I, have you ever been in a relationship with someone where you're constantly breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together and breaking up and getting back together? Well, that's an addiction. You're addicted to that person. And so when you're together, it's argumentative, it's full of stress, it's very passionate in an aggressive way. You fight and fuss about everything. You break up. But when you break up, you're like, oh my God, you're addicted to that hit to that person's presence and you find yourself getting back into the relationship thinking that they're going to change and you're dealing with the same situation. And so if you're constantly breaking up and getting back together, it's an indication that that's probably not the best relationship for you at all. And over the course of time, you should be able to assess where you are in the relationship. My thing is this, if I'm dating somebody and I'm full of stress and I'm just struggling with you and it just seems like that we have more bad times than good times and it's taking me away from my focus and it's causing me to move away from my God and all the things that I would naturally do, the love, the happiness, the joy that I used to have, I now am depressed, I'm now miserable. That's an indication that that relationship is over. So you gotta question the people in your life and what their assignment is. Some people come assigned to you from the enemy to steal your joy to turn your life inside out. That's why you have to have spiritual perception to know who and what a person is and what they're here to do to determine whether they qualify to be in your life. If they're not helping you move closer to God and closer to your purpose, then they're a distraction. And distractions ultimately lead to destruction. Wow. Can you tell the men how to love and care for women? Yeah. Easy. Get to know the woman you're with. Here's, here's the challenge. So a lot of us, we've dated a lot of women, so we come into relationships, I know what to do. I know how to treat her. I know how to... And so we come in treating Danielle the way we treated Susan and Shanana, Mary Shanana. and Shanene and La Rochequea and all these... And so the reality is what worked for them worked for them. But if you're in a relationship with someone new, you can't bring in old tactics to a new relationship. So you have to learn to know the person you're in the relationship with. And that goes back to the simple book, The Five Love Languages. I could be loving you from a pure place, but I could be loving you wrong. So if I don't know what you need and what, me what meets your needs and what pushes your buttons, then I'm loving you ineffectively and it's just not gonna work. So you have to become a student 
of your partner. Just like you go to school and you take on a subject matter or you have a major and you study everything about that and you get a degree in it and then you wind up getting a career in that. Well, if you're in a relationship with someone, you gotta look at them as a subject that you've got to study. Because the more that you know them and learn them, you know how to effectively treat them in that relationship. Fantastic. Last question. Is it okay to date your friend's ex? Wow. That's, that's, everybody's got a different code, Pastor. I know that that wouldn't work for me. I know that I wouldn't want to have any type of relationship with, with the, no, that, that just wouldn't work for me personally. And in, in the situations where I've seen that that has happened, it's created a whole lot more issues than it, it's even worth. But if there's been a long gap of time, right? It, you know, so if you just broke up with her and I'm like, so it's over? Bet. And then I approach her, that's a problem because that's going to make... <laughs> <laughs> but if you're truly over her and there's been a long season and you've gone your way and she's gone her way and years later I happen... It depends on the level of seriousness of your relationship yeah. too. Yeah. So there's so many factors, factors involved to answer that question. Yeah, so, so for that question, there are a lot of factors involved. One, the seriousness of a relationship. Why is that a factor? One... The seriousness of, of your relationship will, inf will impact the cycle. There's a, there's a cycle you're connected to. So when it's very serious, that relationship will have infiltrated all the circles you're connected to. The second thing also is this. It will impact secret what's spoken about. You know, um, generally speaking, this generally speaking, it's a no-no. And the reason is this. The Bible says you shall not covet your neighbor's property. So most of the time, watch, watch, watch what I'm saying. Watch what I'm saying. Most of the time, that test for that girl started or that test for that guy started when he was dating your friend. True. So you were already insane mm. because you were converting your neighbor's property. They may not be married, but you understand what I mean by property. You know, so, so you will find yourself, in fact, so as soon as you, and, and that's why I think as a Christian, if you find that someone is dating, I don't think it's right for you to be hitting on them. Because you don't want someone to do that to you. No. So if someone else is dating, you can't be hitting on them. And listen, ladies that collect gifts from everybody, just know, everything is seed and harvest. If on Valentine you are getting 10 gifts, it tells me the kind of girl you are. Silence in the house of the Lord. <laughs> I'm telling you because why is everybody sending you gifts on Valentine's Day? You said, no, they all love me. What are you doing for them that they love you? Glory to God. Are you Beyonce? So you need to ask yourself some questions. But, but the thing is that most ladies because of our culture, are very open to gifts. But you need to know this. Guys are not that generous. Where the heart of a man is, where the treasure of a man is, his heart is there. So when Amen. they begin to give in that direction, their heart is there. Yep. And that's why, listen, there is no excuse for men to rape. I'm saying it clearly. But sometimes when men rape, you will hear things like, she was coming, she was collecting. How come she's saying no now? I've said it. This is not an excuse for rape. So, if you are receiving investment, you are receiving investment. iPhone XX, you are receiving investment. You are receiving assurance. You are receiving assurance. Just know that one day, there will be demand for return of investment. There it is. There it is. So, if someone gives you a gift, and listen, someone says, by asking what is he for? He says, just for friendship. What else will he say? Didn't you go to school? Will he say he's buying your love? No, he will just say, I just like it. I just want to, just, I just thought you would like it. And you just tell him, you just say, hey, just let him say, you know what? You don't have to return the gift, but you can have a good conversation. Victoria, I'm sorry, Victor. The truth is this. I know that this is an expensive gift. And I'm not young. I know what these gifts mean. I know that it suggests there could be an intention, there could be a genuine interest in me. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you up front, 
I'm in a relationship, I will not consider this. Two, I'm not in a relationship, but the, re but the values I've chosen for myself, you are not the kind of person that I can date. Glory to God. You are not the kind of person I can date. And you just need to let them know from time. I say that it's good that you buy me gifts, but this might not really change my mind. You know, that kind of thing. You may not agree with it, but I understand your position. That's why you're still single anyway. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we are talking from experiential perspective. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Well, were you blessed by that already? Is that good? Thank you. Let, 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 let's receive Asani and just, yeah, thank you. Thank you.